Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual and amazing relationships. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author of the book Paycheck to Purpose and host of The Ken Coleman Show. He's my co-host today. He talks about jobs and careers and money and, well, doing it in a way that you love it. And so if you've got questions about all that, you jump in, we'll talk about it and anything else you want to do. We talk about you right in front of you, and we make a living doing it. Phone number at 888-825-5225. Jump in. Marvin is going to start us off this hour in New York, Albany, to be precise. Hey, Marvin, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Um, hi, Dave and Ken. Um, privilege uh, um, to be able to speaking with you. Um, 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 thank you very much um, for all that you do. Well, thank you. How can we help? Um, so, so a real brief, um, I'm 40. Um, um, my wife is 34, right? So we've been married for 12 years and started a turf grass consulting business, uh, with the money that we received, um, from our wedding, right? So we do work for, um, um, local mom and pop golf courses and conduct, um, field trials for um, plant protectant manufacturers. Uh, I was able to go full time with the business in 2018, and she was able to go full time in 2020. Um, in January, thanks to you guys, uh, we were able to become debt free by paying off our house. Um, one of our clients uh, will be selling their golf course soon. Uh, so my question for uh, you is, uh, should we buy it for $1.2 million? Well, the first question is, can Dave and I play for free? <laughs> it could affect our answer. <laughs> no pressure, Mark. I'm kidding, Mark. Lifetime membership. Yeah, the, uh, it's going to cost you, Marvin. It's going to cost you, buddy. This advice is going to be free today, Dave. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, okay, $1.2 million. And so yep. this thing is uh, has a net profit after all salaries are paid, including whatever the owner is paying himself to manage the course because it's a mom and pop. Um, yep. This thing is making uh, three hundred thousand a year. Uh, uh, no, it's doing uh, doing about uh, one one fifty to to a two hundred uh, net. Okay. So why in the world would you pay one point two for that? That's well, overpriced. Um, yeah, I, I, I mean, um, you know, I, I, I know what, know what, know the golf course business uh, fairly well. The uh, uh, infrastructure in the in the golf course uh, business, um, the 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 uh, the worth that comes from the assets, right? So meaning, right, so golf carts, right, maintenance equipment. Uh, things like that. Yeah. No, the worth and, doesn't come from that. No. Those things only have a value to the extent they create a profit. Okay. If all of those things created zero profit, you would have what's known as a hobby. Okay. Not a business. And so the golf okay. carts, the infrastructure, the quality of the turf, the everything there, the name, the reputation in the community, uh, the area of town it's in, all of that goes to create one thing, profit. And the way you calculate okay. profit is net profit. Uh, a, a small business is worth a maximum of five times net profit. Five times net profit. Yeah, that's a twenty. Yeah. That's a twenty percent rate of return. And a okay. you know, small business purchase is a very high risk purchase, and so you would want at least a twenty percent rate of return. And that's after. It, it, that's if you're an absentee owner, and so let's say I bought it, if, in Tennessee. OK, and mm -hmm. I, I had to hire a manager and I had to hire every single staff member that was needed. Not you get to work over there for free or the a former owner gets to work over there for free and thereby increase the profits. You follow me? Yes, so, I do. Real profits for an absentee investor. This is how you calculate the value of a small business transfer. And uh, it's called a cap rate process, capitalization rate. Um the only other way you could ca calculate the value is the what's called book value, which would be considerably less. And that is if you took all, if you bought it and you sold off all the assets, 
You sold off the golf right. carts. You sold off the real estate. You sold off the. Uh, you collected the receivables. You paid the payables, and that's book value. That should be less than four times, five times net profit. It should be. Okay. Uh, but that's that's if you were going to disband the whole operation, and it's worth more shut down than it is operationally. Then, and I, I right. doubt that's the case here. Because I got to tell you, man, I'm I don't know a ton about the golf business, but there's kind of a joke in the investment world that the guy that makes the money on a golf course is the second owner. The guy that makes the money on a ski slope is the second owner, because the first yeah. one usually goes yeah. bankrupt. There's not right, much. Uh, there's I've not much that. margin or spread no. in that world. Very low margins, and so you know uh, yeah, just be careful to not overpay for it. If you're going to pay cash for it, Marvin, and you want to buy it, it sounds like you know the golf business, or at least the side of it that you've been in. But um, I'm telling you, the finances on this deal they don't sound that great. Um, and if the guy goes, well, the real estate's worth a lot, then he ought to just sell the real estate. If the real estate's worth more than a million two, then he ought to just sell the real estate, put condos on it, or whatever. Uh, cause I mean, from a, from a business transaction standpoint, not a romantic view of grass and trees and ponds. The real estate is unquestionably the most valuable part of this purchase. A mom and pop golf course is a mom and pop golf course for a reason. Not knocking them. I've played some awesome little munis in my life and they're great, but this is a low margin business and you probably don't have the clientele. You look at how old your your average member or your average golfer is, I'd be running all those things beyond everything that Dave mentioned. And unless this is a burning conviction and you got the cash for it and you can handle it, I'd run away from it unless it's a real estate purchase only. I mean, it's just such a low-margin business and you're competing against, in that area, you're competing against higher-end clubs that are charging much, much more, and you're just limited in your growth with a small golf course. You're limited. Your you revenue growth is limited. Got to love the way Ken throws around the insider lingo. What, I've, what did I've I say? I played a lot of really good munis in my time. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. A municipal <laughs> course. I should. You're right. That was inside baseball. Inside golf lingo. Yeah, it just means a local public course, not a private course. It's public. Anybody can play. I've played a lot of really nice munis in my lifetime. <laughs> That was pretty good, Ken. I like the way you did that. You slipped that right in there. Just added to your level of expertise. It was an accident. I <laughs> grew no, up, it wasn't. No, that's all I could afford to play. My dad, we, that's all we could play were munis when I was growing up on a pastor's income. <laughs> <laughs> when I think of munis, I think of municipal bonds. Muni bonds. <laughs> oh, in the golf world, yeah. that just means a I know, I goat know. track. I know. I figured it out. I figured yeah. it out. No, it's not necessarily a goat track. There's some nice there ones. Are, there are some very nice ones, yes. I do know what goat track means. It means horrible golf course. Yeah, I do I'll know tell that. you a great one in uh, Virginia Beach area, Stumpy Lake. <laughs> oh, there it's you a go. great municipal golf course. Great name. Stumpy Lake. Yeah, a bunch of tree stumps go. all over the lake. Well-known muni as of today. This Useless information from Ken Coleman. This Ramsey Show. <laughs> <laughs> Hey folks, you know that sinking feeling when you make an offer on a house you love and then you hear there's another offer? You need the Churchill Mortgage Home Buyer Edge. Super fast pre-approval and a secured interest rate. Plus a $5,000 seller guarantee gives your offer the best chance of being accepted. The Home Buyer Edge from Churchill gives you an advantage over those other guys. Go to churchillmortgage.com today to learn more. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thanks for being with us, America. We appreciate you hanging out. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Our question of the day comes from Neighborly, your hub for home services. Most American homes have dozens of appliances, and chances are at any given time there's something wrong with at least one of them. Mr. Appliance, a neighborly brand, offers expert appliance service on your schedule visit neighborly.com today to find home service experts including mr appliance in your area 
Today's question comes from Neil in Wisconsin. I'm wanting to get my degree in the financial industry. What is the average starting salary for someone who is straight out of college, and what would their position be? How much room for promotion and growth is in this industry, and how do I set myself up for success? Uh, Neil, I don't know off the top of my head what an average starting salary is because this is kind of a big, ambiguous question. The financial industry covers a lot of different specific now you can be trades. Every, you can be everything from bank teller to CEO. Dude. Yeah, so that's a pretty wide range. But the second part of the question we can address, uh, how much room for promotion and growth is in this industry? Well, again, depending on the lane that you pick uh, within the financial industry, think of it as a track and field track. There's six, eight lanes there, multiple lanes. It depends. Uh, you can do very, very well. There's no question you could do high six figures and you could be a seven-figure earner uh, in the world of finance. I mean, there's just no question about that. That's everything from Wall Street to uh, an investment professional that does very, very well. So uh, the, the sky's the limit uh, is the answer to this. How do you set yourself up for success? Uh, that's the uh, that's the answer. The answer to that is is doesn't matter on the industry. Uh, I think it is three parts. you got to know your role. On every level that you're at, that's clarity. Do I know what's expected of me? The second thing is accept the role. Win the now. Have an attitude of gratitude for where you are and bust it. There is no next if you don't win the now. And third, maximize the role. Go above and beyond. Don't walk around acting like you're the CEO, but then work like you are, like you own the place. That's know your role, accept your role, maximize your role. That's clarity, attitude, and effort. I think if you do that, on every level that you're at, you're always going to be promotable. Yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, bathe. <laughs> smile. Show up on time. <laughs> smile. Uh, don't don't be an entitled twit. <laughs> and um, these things will take you a long way. That's true. I mean, it, it's because really, I mean, in a world of uh, – people who don't do those basic things you you really do set yourself ahead. apart it's, yeah it's, it's just a big deal just show up on time mm -hmm. you know and um wow so yeah so neil the, the 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 problem that we're having answering the question is it's like saying i'm gonna get a marketing degree what do marketing people make well the, there's about eight eighty thousand different mm -hmm. things marketing people do and the same thing's true with financial a finance degree. I have a finance degree with a specialization in real estate. Um, and it's because I wanted to be in the real estate business. That was my goal. I grew up in the real estate business. That was the long-term thing. But I've got all the financial goober classes under my belt now. And so uh, a thousand years ago I did. And uh, um, so, you know, now what are you going to do with that? There's a lot of different things. You know, like Ken said, corporate position as a financial analyst. Um and, and but finance in general, finance and accounting are really good uh, baseline mm -hmm. uh, sets of knowledge to move into companies and do very well. Uh, for instance, there's two primary sources for the CEO of major companies in America today. Almost all the CEOs in major companies in America today were, are either former CFOs. Uh, or finance people, accounting people, uh, bean counters of some kind or another, or they were the director of marketing and sales. That's the primary two primary pools that CEOs come out of, the people that bring in the revenue and the people that manage and operate the business well from a numbers perspective have a higher likelihood of becoming CEOs. Uh, very few people come from the graphic arts department to become the CEO. Mm -hmm. And that's not to put down the graphic arts department. It's just a statistical fact. And so, you know, you look at where that's taking you. So, uh, but yeah, it's a great degree as yes. a baseline of knowledge because in getting that degree, it's a, it's a basic business degree. You're going to end up with good statistics under your belt, good accounting under your belt. You're going to end up with marketing classes under your belt. And you know, th those are going to be, those will be knowledge bases that you'll use wherever you land in business. So all of that sets you up for a positive situation. Carla is in Florida. Hey, Carla, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, thank you for having me. So excited to be talking to you. I watch you all the time on YouTube, and thank I you. love your show. Oh, we appreciate You're you being welcome. here. How can we help? So I have some questions. I've been plowing through my baby steps and especially paying off like credit cards Good for and you. 
I I don't have anything saved up in retirement. I'm a nurse. I've been a nurse for 25 years. I make 138000 plus a year. Uh, my home is paid off. My biggest expense is my car, which I owe 23000 on, and my interest rate is 4.4%. So I first... I'm going through these baby steps, but I was paying off cards yesterday, so I paid off six, cut them up. Way to go. Threw away all the papers so that I wouldn't be tempted to call them back for a new car. And now I ran into the next one that I wanted to pay off, and they said if I pay it off, see, this one has an annual fee. And they said if I paid it off, it was going to ding my credit and that, you know, just keep the card and pay the annual fee. But I was like, well, how much is that going to ding my credit? And does that matter? Mm -hmm. Because that's the next card to pay off. I have five more to pay off. So, wait a minute, let me get this straight. A credit card company told you it's not a good idea to get rid of a credit card. Right. No. They said keep it open you're kidding it was gonna hurt my credit if i closed it yeah of course they did yeah well it is it's gonna it is gonna damage your credit score so the question is this where is it we're trying to get to is is a credit score your goal or is money your goal um retirement is my goal yeah having and by the way i've know, had people try to boil the credit score you can't eat it it's right. worthless. You know what a credit score is good yeah. for? There's only one thing a credit score is good for. You know what it is? Get more credit. Borrowing more money. Going into yeah. debt, which is kind of the opposite of having money for retirement. It's the opposite of what you're trying to accomplish right now. So if your goal right. is to get rid of your debt so that you have some money, who cares about your credit score? Yeah, and, you know, I... I you drove right past like that. You didn't even get karma. it. Yeah. How old are you? I am 60. You are killing it with 138000 girl. Mm. I'm proud of you. Very good. Yeah. Let's get these cards Thank chopped you. up and get rid of this car payment. Start piling up some money. So five or six years from now, you've got $250,000, $300,000 set aside. And quit screwing so around credit card car, companies. If I, can, if I can pay all my cards off within the next two months and then... Then knock out that $23,000 car loan. In a year. And then, oh, you can do it faster than that. You make 130. You ain't got anything else to do. This is important. Well, I, I do help my mom and my daughter out. Well, um, to the how much do you give them? Um, I pay my mother's car insurance and my daughter about 500. You're a paying month an 85 year old's car insurance? Yeah. Does that seem weird to you? That's scary well, yeah, to me. Yeah, but she's only living on Social Security. Yeah, I know. So where's um, the 85-year-old driving to? To church and to the grocery store. Yeah, thought so. This is pretty expensive trips. So um, you need to think through what where your money's going and get control of it. And for sure, we don't take advice from credit card companies on anything. All we do to them is say, bye-bye. See ya. Wouldn't want to be ya. You are the cigarette of the financial world, you credit card goobers. We don't want anything to do with you. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, if you're in over your head with student loans and tired of getting calls from collection agencies, if private student loan debt is taking away your financial peace and you don't see any way out, you need Y Refi. They're not a debt settlement company and they're not connected to a bank. Y Refi refinances defaulted private student loans that other places won't touch and gives you a custom loan built for you based on your ability to pay. So when you refinance your private student loan debt with Y Refi, you'll have a payment you can afford with a low fixed interest rate you couldn't get anywhere else to help you stick to your budget 
and work the debt snowball. And you can save thousands of dollars. To learn more about this custom refinancing option and a lump sum payoff option you could qualify for after 24 months, call 844-2-RAMSEY or go to yrefi.com slash Ramsey. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. I'm Dave Ramsey, your host. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Ben is in New York. Hi, Ben. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you doing? Great, man. What's up? Um, I am currently living with my parents. I am 29. Um, I've been saving for several years now, and I'm trying to figure out if I am ready to uh, buy a house and if I can afford to you know, get my own place at this point. Okay. How much do you have saved? Uh, 100K. Okay. Uh, what keeps you from leaving there and buying a house? Um, well, I was mostly just trying to reach a certain, I was trying to reach that goal of 100, 100K saved. Okay, you got, really 100K. To, you got 100K. You got 100K. I mean, common sense tells me you could go buy a house in Albany with 100K. You're 29 years old. How much do you make? Uh, about 70, 75. Cool. All right. I, I, I would definitely do it, like, this week. <laughs> you think you think that's a good idea? Because I, I didn't want to rent was the thing. I didn't want to be throwing out money, you know. Dude, but impulsive like, is not on your list out. of things to do. Yeah. We don't right. have to worry about you being impulsive. You're 29, you live at home. You're not impulsive, okay? Right. Uh, time to go. Yes, go get you a house. Get you a life. Yeah, for sure. No, I like it. I love it, man. So, uh, how much do you make again? Seventy. What do uh, you do? Seventy. Um, I work in accounting. Okay, uh, you are risk averse, aren't you? Man, you're just. Hey, um, it's time, man. Go out in the sun, see the sunshine. <laughs> the uh, the uh, the you you are a numbers dude. I love you. I'm a nerd. I'm a numbers nerd too, man. So I'm right there with you, Ben. You've been crunching numbers and crunching numbers and crunching numbers. And the problem with those numbers nerds is, and you're, you're one, I'm one. So I'm owning it with you. We can get paralysis of the analysis and you have a bad case. Sure. Get a house, yeah, no, get, get a life. Mm -hmm. Go, go, go Don't do worry, something. I mean, go have some fun, been, man. Go get, yeah. you know, and, and tell your mama, you love her and you'll see her in five months. Yeah. I mean, she's going to be she going to be glad to get rid of you. I promise. I don't think she is actually. Well, I think I, that's part of the problem. He's an easy guy to live with. He, he's he not is, a problem. He's not. But let me tell you like, something. Not like he's having parties in the basement or something. We're here, seeing so. more and more of this, and I'm not picking on no, Ben, but no. I do want to say this. Ben, go there's, buy a house. There's two things that are going on. Number one, he's got the analysis paralysis situation. Yeah. But he also, along with the fear of change, is how comfortable he is at mom's house. And that can just keep you when you because you can justify staying by using the numbers. And I think you got to be realistic. How much of this is I'm just afraid to kind of go out and start adulting? That wasn't even a term ten years ago, and I hate saying it. I'm a little embarrassed that I even uttered it. Yeah, but I mean it's, it's time right for a lot. Of, <laughs> <laughs> a great callback. Uh, but yeah, I, I just think we got too many young twenty somethings that are just terrified of change. And we got to call I, that. Let out. me just tell you, when, when you're out there and on the wire and there's no net, uh, it is terrifying. Yeah, it's also exhilarating. And it, it it's also what makes you a man or makes you a woman, my son. Yeah. So yeah, um, I hey, um, you know, yes, Ben, you should go buy a house, and we're Absolutely. not picking on you, but you did open a can of worms, so we'll deal with it for a second. Um, here's the thing, moms and dads, you're not doing uh, your kiddos favors when you leave them in the nest too long mm -hmm. a eagle that stays in the nest too long becomes known as a turkey and ben i didn't just call you a turkey i'm talking about a concept here okay so ben you're, you're free from this you we're, we're, we love you we're happy for you we're glad you got 100k you need to buy a house in the next month and you need to move immediately for your sake and uh, it's good it's good you, you know we're there but uh 
So our, our oldest, when she came out of school, easy kid. Oh, yeah. Denise. To this day, yeah. she's just a pleasant, easy person. And um, and she moved back to our, she's the only one of them that moved back to our house after college. And uh, she was waiting on a, a roommate situation to develop so she could go get the, the first rental property, right? Uh, and um, so she was living there for about uh, two months. And we said, okay, that's probably enough. And she's like, what? I'm like, you, you know, you, you got you to get this done. Because not because we don't like you. She, she was not in our way. She's like Ben. She could have lived there, and we wouldn't, oh. have, we wouldn't have noticed. She'd been there until she's 29. We wouldn't have noticed. But uh, we're like, no, you, you are missing out on life when, when you're 22, 23, 25 years old, and you live in your mama's basement. You're missing out on life. Yep. And so you need to go be somebody. And um, it breaks our heart because we love you. We, we like having you around. But uh, it's not about us. It's about you and your development as a person, your uh, emotional, your psychological, your spiritual development, your financial development. You become a different person when you buy your own eggs and pay your own light bill mm -hmm. and fold your own clothes. Or don't. But they're your clothes. Mm. Yeah. And that it, it just changes. There's a little thing happens there, a little different thing. Oh, and yeah. again, Ben. For God's sakes, we're not picking on you, okay? We're not. You called up. You're a nice young man. We appreciate you. Yeah. None of this is aimed at yeah. you. But I'm just telling you, folks, moms and dads, you are stunting their growth. 100%. Reminds me of that movie with Matthew McConaughey, oh, Failure to it's Launch. It's a horrible movie. I don't know. I think it's Math a great Matthew, rom -com. Matthew's done some really good work in his life, and that is not on the list. This is exciting, folks. Dave Ramsey with a strong opinion on a rom-com. I, <laughs> I, I never thought I'd see the day. Well, I this mean, is come great. on. If your co-star is Terry Bradshaw, I'm just saying. You're right. Okay. The, the quality of the script writing was low. I, I'll give you that. But but when Stacey wants to see it, I say, okay. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah there, there is that. I'm blaming it on her. Uh, yeah, I would. <laughs> I'm blaming it on you. But we're, all right. Joe is in Louisville, Kentucky. Hi, Joe. What's up? Hi, thanks for having me, guys. How are you? Better than we deserve. How can we help? Good. Um, so, uh, just quick background. Uh, last year, I had uh, I left the job that I was at for about 15 years. Uh, since then, uh, I've been struggling to, uh, you know, find a job uh, to make what I need to make to pay the bills. And I'm primarily using job boards, and they, they just seem to not be going anywhere. Oh, they're Is awful. There other, That's horrible. Yeah, resources out there, I guess. To, what were you making? You know, um, I was making about 130000 a year. Doing what? It was commission, so it kind of went up and down. Uh, sales and uh, management. Okay. And why did you walk out the door without having anything to go to? Uh, well, they uh, had a new ownership come through, and one of the first changes they made was pay uh, for the, the regional manager. So I ended up, um, was on pace for about seventy k after they uh Took oh, over. Okay. okay, so they cut um, your pay so in half, another... and you said you said stick it. Okay, I got that. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So right. have you been so working? I have another... Go ahead. Have yeah, you been so working? I have okay. been work... Yeah, I've been working. Um, I'm currently making um, right now about fifty five k a year. So do you know um, how to sell? Been... Yes, I, I can sell. What were you selling before when you're making one hundred thirty? Uh, it's furniture. Wholesale or or, or to customers. I mean, or, or to consumers. I'm sorry. Yeah, a uh, customer, uh, customer, two customers. So okay, yeah, retail I got you. customer. Okay. Wow. I got to tell you, my mom uh, sold furniture. Was a manager of a large furniture chain for 35 years. And if you can make that kind of money in furniture, those margins aren't that high. Uh, you've got a lot of options in front of you right now, a lot. And you've got to stop job boarding, and you've got to start start having coffee with people that you know, you civic know clubs, churches. You know people. And look, you can sell anything. You're not a guy who's stuck in an industry. In other words, you aren't just effective in the furniture industry. You know a product. You know a service. Not only can you sell it, Joe, but you led a team of people. Medical, medical device sales you can make two and a quarter. Easy. Easy. So with I've I've looked at some medical like sales jobs. I, I just feel like um, you know, I, I don't feel like it's you know, I'm qualified, I guess, for it. Do you you just apply hey, anyway? Yes. Just hope, they don't, there's aren't doctors making the sales. Yeah. There's salespeople I got making a friend, sales to doctors. Yeah. I got a friend who's got who's a former college football player. I'm not knocking football players. He's advising surgeons on orthopedic devices in the operating room. Not because he's a genius, because they trained him on the devices. 
Dave's right. You don't need anything other than a willingness to learn and basic intelligence, and you have both of those in droves. Hey, we're going to send you Ken's book from yeah. Paycheck to Purpose. I want you to go on his website and learn his. Uh, oh, yeah. Oh, no. Also, we're going to send you Proximity Principle. That's what he's other number one because that's that does that's what you do instead of job boards. Well, it'll help you do what you're supposed to do. Yeah. Well, you've all played the telephone game. The first person whispers a message to the second person who whispers it to the third and so on around the table until the original message has completely changed. Multiply that confusion by 100 if you run a business with different software systems that don't talk to each other. That's why there's NetSuite by Oracle. In the early days of Ramsey, we were using different systems for all of our business units. We needed one single source for accurate data. NetSuite was the software we used to optimize and take us to the next level. NetSuite gave us the visibility into all of our numbers so that we could communicate across departments and plan ahead better. And as we grew, it scaled with us. NetSuite worked for Ramsey and it will make a difference for your business too. Join the more than 34,000 customers who trust NetSuite to help make them smarter and make better decisions and level up their operations. To learn more, get a free product tour at netsuite.com slash Ramsey. That's netsuite.com slash Ramsey. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personalities, my co-host. Evan is in Indianapolis. Hi, Evan. How are you? Good. How are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? Um, so I'm a young guy. Last couple of years, um, I'm, a, I'm a numbers cruncher, and my numbers aren't crunching anymore. I'm not able to build my savings, and I not sure what to do with it okay what do you make uh i make 27.50 an hour okay and uh so what is that about 70 a year um no, it's more like I'm, 60 a year isn't it yeah yeah okay what do you do uh i'm an ag mechanic so i work on uh, farm equipment okay all right and um how much debt do you have uh, about a hundred and seventeen thousand on what? Uh, seventy five on my house. I've got twenty seven thousand in student loans, and sixteen on a car. Okay. All right. Are you single? Uh, no. Getting ready to get married in a month. What's she make? Uh, she's part time because we had a. Uh, this is where the whole two year thing came in. Uh, we had a kid two years ago. Um. And she, so she makes, I think she makes 15 an hour and she works 20 to 25 hours a week. Okay. All right. Well, there's two sides of the equation, the income side and the outgo side. And if we want yeah. to uh, change the numbers, we usually end up working on both. So okay. you're working 40 hours. She's working 15. Somebody's going to be working more yeah. if we want more money or we're going to be working differently meaning a new career if we want more money and um and that the outgo side is a car payment and a student loan payment when you get rid of those by tearing into them and making them the major priority a priority above all other things and get rid of them uh then you know you can get there but if you guys are making a hundred thousand between the two of you or eighty thousand between the two of you you can work through a sixteen thousand dollar car debt and a twenty seven thousand dollar student loan debt you know, in 18, 24 months, but you're going to be on beans and rice, rice and beans. You're going to be working overtime and you're going to sell so much stuff. The dog thinks it's next. <laughs> okay. Are you budgeting? Uh, 
I mean, I kind of do. I mean, I don't have any. No is the answer. You know, I, don't, I don't have a, yeah, no. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and I'm not, that's not a setup question, but when somebody says, I can't seem to get caught up, I can't seem to pile up savings, we have baby steps anyway, so we want you $1,000, baby step one, that's for emergencies, then you're attacking this debt. But you've got to know where your money is going. And if you're not budgeting, yeah. you're going to have a hard time getting traction, whether you're in baby step one, getting $1,000, baby step two, knocking that debt off, baby step three, saving up three to six months emergency fund. If you're not budgeting, you have a greater chance of spinning your wheels because you just simply don't know where the money's okay. going. So, so when are you getting married? Uh, October the 7th. Awesome. Hey, we're going to give you a yeah. wedding gift. Uh-oh. I'm going to put you and the bride through Financial Peace University. Both of you have to go okay. if I give it to you for free. Do you promise? Yes, I promise. It's nine lessons. It also includes the world's best budgeting app, Every Dollar, the premium version, which connects to your bank. And I want you to jump in that immediately and start using it today. I'm going to give it to you right now. Austin's going to pick up and tie you into it. But get on the Every Dollar app, like Ken was saying. Because here's what we find. Research has shown across the general population that when people start doing a written budget each month, they have a 10 to a 15% lift in their money because there's that much in lost in just disorganization and impulse spending. Uh, we find it's actually more than that because the people we're dealing with are different than the general public. The people we're dealing with are like you, Evan. They're sick and tired of being sick and tired, and they're about ready to bust into something. And so they yep. lean in even harder on that budget, and they make every one of those dollars squeal. They make every one of those dollars behave. And that's why we even call the budget every dollar. Every dollar has an assignment. And that's why the budgeting app is called that. Every dollar has a name. Every dollar has an assignment. And so you're just going to get um, uh, merciless on making the money that the two of you have coming in behave and squeeze every dime out of it, increase your income, decrease your outgo, and then walk these baby steps. And if Financial Peace University will help you do that. And uh, certainly the Every Dollar Budgeting app will help you do that. So ch check those out. We're going to give them to you free as a wedding gift and get you started because I've been right where you are. Evan, when people say, Ken, Ken caught that beautifully, because I used to say that too, I can't seem to get, and what that usually means is I haven't been able to out-earn my disorganization. I haven't been able to out-earn my stupidity. I haven't been able to out-earn my impulse spending. I haven't been able to out-earn my lack of a plan. Mm. And nobody can, by the way. And I used to think I'd just go get more money because I'm an abundance guy. Mm -hmm. And I would go get more money, and then I would screw it up. <laughs> you know. And so you know, you've got to make the money that you have behave. And when you're managing that well, you become what's called a faithful steward, someone who is stewarding their money in a trustworthy manner, and God looks down and goes, oh, wait, there's one in Indianapolis that gets it. Yeah. Ha, who knew? You know, and uh, we might be able to let him manage some more. That's right. If he's managing what he has well. Yep. Hello. And That's a basic biblical principle. And last piece of encouragement, Evan, if you budget first, dive into every dollar, start to see where the money is, you'll be more motivated to do extra work because as an ag mechanic who can work on those big old machines that I don't even know how they work, right? Uh, he can work on a lot of different engines. He's got some transferable skills. There's a lot of side work where you as a mechanic can make really good money, but you're more motivated to do that when you go, okay, now I'm actually getting ahead mm -hmm. because I'm now disciplined and I have a plan. Yeah. And where do I want to be in 10 years? Right. So now you're going, okay, I'll go bust it. Yeah, and where do I want to be in my career in 10 years? Yeah. That, that's the plan. This is how it works, boys and girls. Beautiful. Hey, uh, Austin will pick up and get you signed up. We'll get you taken care of. Susan's in New York. Hey, Susan, welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, how are you? Better than I deserve. What's up? I have a question. Um, I'm currently in a condo that I want to sell, and I'm looking at either renting it out and then buying something new. Um, or maybe selling it and kind of taking this like windfall, if we want to call it that, that's going on in real estate and pay off my debt and then also buy something new. B. Either way, I feel like I want to leave this condo, but I'm afraid to let it go because I I'm have not. a good interest rate on it. And I'm, I'm not. Like, it's called a windfall. You you nailed it. Oh. You're going to take okay. the money and run. Let it go. 
Let yeah. it go. Oh, my God. <laughs> How about that, Dave? You didn't see that coming. No, you're right. That yeah. was on key, by And I way. hope I never see it coming again. Jade did the exact <laughs> same thing yesterday, but it was a little better. <laughs> well, Jade is a lot better than me. Let's Jade just has call a voice. it out. Yeah. Now, so, anyway, yeah. <laughs> Susan, we've been interrupted here by a solo that was uninvited. It made the so point. So, the deal is this. Um, we, yeah, you don't want to keep the condo because you're becoming a landlord by default, not by intent. If you own another house and you were debt free and you had a pile of, you know, and you wouldn't go borrow on that house in order to buy a condo in the city, you just wouldn't do it. And effectively by not selling this, it's the same thing as if you bought it, you know, in terms of a balance sheet or in terms of the decision-making paradigm. And so, yeah, you're much better off to, to I can't even say it. Yeah, let see, it go. You, tried, you went there. Yeah, yeah, you it caught go. yourself. I, I, yeah, yeah, it's just, oh, okay, I got to chill. But yeah, <laughs> let it go. Yeah, that's what you need to do. And <laughs> you're going to be humming that around the house tonight. Oh, no, Sharon's going to be like, what are you doing? You're going to be like, Coleman. Who are you? And what that's you all you need to say. Husband? She'll understand. It's She'll all understand. Ken Coleman's fault. She'll understand. So many things are. But hey, right. you've taught this for years. The idea of being a, a, a landlord, landlord by long default, distance, and, and or even or even distance, local, it work. creates headaches. Yeah, just you know, yes, real estate's a good investment, but very few people back into it. You need to walk into it with cash after you got the rest of your finances straightened out. So sell it, Susan. Sell it, please. That's what I would do if I woke up in your shoes. And thank you for the call. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey folks, Ken Coleman here. Did you know The Ramsey Show is one of the most popular podcasts in the world? Get your daily dose of advice on life and money. Check out all of our shows from The Ramsey Network wherever you listen to podcasts. From the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thank you for joining us. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, host of the Ken Coleman Show, and author of the number one best-selling book, From Paycheck to Purpose, is my co-host, as we talk about your job, your life, your money. Your, where your money comes from, your work. Ken is an expert in that area, and he can help. So jump in. The phone number is 888 Jim is with us in Vancouver. Hi, Jim. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Hi, Dave. Thanks for having me on. Sure. What's up? Um, I'm calling from just outside Vancouver in British Columbia here. Mm -hmm. And basically, I was wondering if it was smarter for me to buy a house or start but start a business first and if you would think buying a house would be smarter how would i go about that with today's like housing market buying a house in terms of to live in as your home or uh, as a rental property it would be to live in as my own ideally with a suite to rent out but that might be further down the line mm -hmm. okay are you single i'm single yeah what do you make um, I'm 20 and I still do live with my parents, but I currently make 35 bucks an hour. Mm -hmm. What's okay. the business you want to start? Um, it would be in the, um, equipment services and welding, um, industry. Mm -hmm. Okay. I, I, obviously you know how to, uh, do equipment services and welding. Uh, where are you going to get your yeah. customers? Uh, so I got quite a few connections from past jobs at farms and whatnot from when I was a bit younger. So I would be able to get a lot of customers in the agricultural um, type of work. Is that business going to require... Why are they gonna, oh, go ahead, go ahead. Well, what I'm getting at is he said house or start business. And so I'm wondering, is there a lot of capital outlay? Like, are you going to have to put a lot of money into this to launch this business idea? Um, so I, 
Again, I haven't really put a whole lot of thought. Like I get, I put a lot of thought towards starting the business, but I haven't really tallied up the numbers because um, I've just been told that for buying a house, if you're self-employed, the bank doesn't look super highly on that rather than if you make a steady income at a place that's been around for a lot longer. They're going to want to see two, well, in America, they're going to want to see two tax or two years of tax returns. I don't know what it is in British Columbia. But two years of tax okay. returns as a self-employed person proves you make money. Other than that, there's no problem at all being self-employed. But uh, but obviously you can't move in there with, uh, and again, I do not know the mortgage process in uh, British Columbia. I can't comment on that. I'm ignorant about it. So, But you'd have to find that out. But I think you're probably, you know, you're on the right track there with that issue. Um, how much money do you have saved? Um, so I currently have... 35000 in my savings, and then I got just under 30000 invested. Okay, good for you. All right. And um, you you are in the welding and uh, equipment services business now making $35 an hour. That's correct. Okay. And so are, do you have the ability to do side jobs in the same industry without uh, stepping on your current employer's customers or stealing from them in any way. Yes, that's that's the thing that I said. Sorry, my email earlier. I never mentioned your, your phone's that, breaking up. I didn't understand you. Try again. Um, I do have the ability to work on side jobs from home and also from the shop without getting in the way of my current career. Yeah, without ethics problems with your current employer, right? Exactly. Okay. All right. So what I would do is uh, I would not start my business full-time. I would start it part-time and, and start doing some side gigs. And I would go get me a rental pro- a, a, a place to rent and just, you know, move out of your parents' house. You're 20 years old. Um, and I would not buy a house right now. I would just keep piling up cash. You've got plenty of time. There's nothing to do with the housing market. It's got to do with where you are. And then I want you to build up that side gig, build up that side gig to where you're making more with it than you are during your day job. Then you're ready to quit and run your job, run your business full time. The big deal here that you're going to discover, Jim, and I want you to discover this by actually doing it, not not in theory, not discussing it. Uh, what you're going to discover is, is that doing the welding and being an excellent welder is a different skill set than running a business. You can be an excellent technician and still run the business poorly. You could be an, you can run a business well and be a horrible technician. People do that sometimes. But uh, what often happens is someone is a great chef, and so they automatically assume they need a restaurant. Well, it's a completely different thing to run a restaurant than it is to be a chef. The only thing that's in yeah. common is food. That's the only thing. I mean, chef is one skill. Operating a business is another skill, and that, that's what I'm seeing with you. So I, I think you're probably very good at what you do. You sound very competent and confident, and um, so I would want you to, to just build this up on the side. What do you think? Yeah, the only thing I'd add to that is while you're doing the work on the side, see, there's no risk here. You're not all in. you got a great job, no conflict of interest, and now I'm learning the business with zero risk. And Dave's right. There's a process of welding, and then there's I'm selling these parts, and that's a whole different ballgame. Then I'm running my business. And while I'm doing it on the side, I'm learning by experience, but I'm also going to sit with people who are winning in the industry. I will tell you this, Dave. I think the most underrated question in the history of the world is, will you help me? And will you help me, in this case, a young man who's 20, who approaches a guy maybe in his 30s or 40s or 50s or 60s and says, hey, I want to get into this business one day. Can I buy your lunch or coffee? And will you just tell you me what me? I need to know? You help and me? you helping me is you just giving me some knowledge and some wisdom. And I have found that successful people are very willing to help that person who asks that question and shows up with a willingness to learn, pad and paper, notes on your phone. I don't care how you do it. And if you do that, here's what happens. Now you get all this wisdom and knowledge from somebody who's been way out in front of you, and then you begin to apply it on the side, and Dave's right. That picks right back up where Dave's advice is. At some point, you're going to scale it to the point where you can walk away from the day job right into working for yourself. But there's no risk here, and patience is the key. It's hard to be patient when you're 20. 
I mean, crap, it's hard for me to be patient at 49. But it's really hard to be patient when you're 20. But patience is what sets you up for the long haul. And I think mm-hmm. that's the that's the only thing I'd add to what you said. I thought the advice was fantastic. So don't buy a house. No. Move out. Don't start your business full-time. Start it part-time. Build it up, build it up, build it up, build it up. Learn the business skills. And I'll send you a copy of our number one best-selling book, Entree Leadership, yeah, great. which is how we show people what our playbook has been on running a business, how we grew the Ramsey Solutions business from a card table in my living room to now almost 1,100 folks on the team and over $300 million a year in revenue. And we'll show you how we did that. And so, but that's the skill set. It's a different set of skills than welding. And you, you got to be good at both to make this work. This is The Ramsey Show. If you're like most people, your home is your most valuable asset. And when you want to make improvements, it can feel like everything costs too much or takes too long. But something as simple as custom window coverings from Blinds.com can completely change your space and add value to your home. We've recommended Blinds.com for over a decade, so you know you can trust them. From blinds, drapes, and shutters to motorized shades, they make it easy and affordable to upgrade your entire home, and their team is ready to help with everything from design consultation to measuring and installation. Plus, there are never any misleading quotes or hidden fees. Everything's backed by their 100% satisfaction guarantee, and shipping is always free. See why Blinds.com is the number one online retailer of custom window coverings. Go to Blinds.com now and save up to 50% off everything site-wide. Visit Blinds.com today to learn more. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host. Thanks for being here, America. Open phones at 888-825-5225. You jump in and we will talk. Joe is in Lake Charles, Louisiana. Hi, Joe. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Yes, sir. Thank you all for taking my call. Sure. What's up? So my question today is um, an, a couple at our church is offering to owner finance their house to us. And I'm just calling to see if that is going to be a smart play with my current situation. Okay. Um, well, we t- you know we can check your current situation. So, how much debt do you have? Um, right now, we're on baby step two. We still have about forty forty two thousand, um, mm-hmm. which ranges from a credit card, mm-hmm. car note. What's your household medical. income? Um, sixty-five to seventy thousand. So, when do you plan to do be done with the forty-two? Um, we're we're snowballing. I mean, by two two and a half three years. Okay, would be. Yeah, that sounds reasonable. Um, I, I, we tell folks, Joe, not to buy a home while they're in debt. Okay. Because, uh, um, you know, Murphy will move in your spare bedroom, and the water heater will break, the roof will leak. And the heat and air will go out, and you're broke because you're still in debt, and then you got a real yeah. mess on your hands. So, what appears to be a blessing because of the timing is not going to be a blessing. It would end up being a curse. So, w- w- I would tell you to wait, and that may mean that this couple sells the house to someone else, and that's fine. And you'll, you know, God will have something else for you. There'll be another plan when you're ready, and you have a good emergency fund and a good down payment, and you have no debt. And you move into a house in that situation, the house can be a blessing, not a curse. But when you move into a house broke, you just get broker. That's why they call them brokers. You know, it's just, it's a bad idea. Don't do it. Don't do it. James, is that ready? Yeah. Okay. All right. So, uh, 
they sent me this thing. God, Ken, this, I don't know if you saw this or not. I haven't seen this. This is very exciting. A little bit. It's not exciting. It's oh, scary. Oh, it's not? Okay. It's scary. So, I mean, we get scam stuff all the time. People using my name. And, oh. You know, yeah. people using, you know, saying Dave Ramsey said do this, Dave Ramsey said do that. And it's like, well, of course Dave Ramsey didn't say to do that. That's dumb. He wouldn't do that. That's, and, you know, anybody that knows us knows the, these things. But then people that don't know us, they think I'm endorsing you know, bull crap. So this one pops up. This one's scary because it's AI. That's what I was going to ask you. Yeah. So th- you, you're going to play it? Play it. This is on Instagram. This is the dumbest thing I've seen, and I don't know when. Total credit card debt surged to $1.03 trillion. It marks the highest level ever on record. That part's all In real. the Fed, dating back all the way to 2003. Yeah. Um, I have about $16,000 worth of, worth of debt. Um, it includes a car, a credit card, the medical debt from the birth of our son. Okay, so what you need to do, and this applies to my listeners at home who oh, have debt, bad. is go apply for an economic recovery package today. Do you hear me? Yes, sir. The fastest way is to settle it and pay pennies on the dollar for what you owe. And you can do that using a free service through the economic recovery program today. Thank you, sir. Wow. Hey, we love you. You hold on a second. Kelly's going to pick up, okay? Yeah, the economic recovery package and pay pennies on the dollar. And, you, of course, you swipe down and you go to this website to buy their crap. And uh, and obviously, I mean, I said AI. When I first heard it on my computer, it was AI. But when I heard it now, just now in the studio, that doesn't, it's not even AI. It's just a bad voice. Yeah. He got one little phrase. He got one little phrase that was close. But to somebody who doesn't listen to you much, and did a drive-by on YouTube, that's nasty. That is really bad. A, it was an Instagram thing. So, we, wow. of course, we got the attorneys on it. We'll get them shut down. Instagram shut them down. But uh, then they pop back up as quick as you shut them down because, it's, you know, it's yeah. a scam it's everywhere. It's like whack-a-mole. Yeah, it's, it, they're everywhere. But yeah. I, I, they just, you know, you don't notice, but it would change from these earbuds in our ears to the microphone with our, in front of our face. That's exactly And right. uh, And then the thing in front of your face, it makes it look like I'm saying it. And... Uh, and then yeah. closes out with with me actually closing the call out. Of course, you know the ultimate deception. Yeah. Bookend it with actual real stuff from you. Yeah, it's very you know that may, all, that all, freaks me all, out. All fraudulently and in violation of copyright, by the way, too. But yeah, right. wow, wow. So no, we do not endorse the Economic Recovery Act, which doesn't even exist. <laughs> which by, by the, the way, way, yeah, what a joke. Does not exist. There's yeah. no such thing. Economic okay? recovery. And, and so, and you can settle your debts for pennies on the dollar. Yeah, you can do that. But what this is, is one of these scam uh, debt consolidation places. Yes. And uh, they're getting you into a debt consolidation process. And oh my But gosh. that part was brilliant because that's the kind of fooiness that we hear from D.C. They say things like Economic Recovery Act. And we all go, oh, they're here to help. Yeah. The economic recovery. Yeah. Yeah. You're right. That That's... It's troubling, though. It's troubling. Ronald Reagan had a famous quote. He said the most scary words in the English language are, I'm from the government and I'm here to help. Yeah, that's exactly (laughs) right. Amen and amen. The Economic Recovery Act. And just... just What does that even mean? Yeah. It's not even an act, by the way. Oh, it is an act, but it's not that kind of an act. Wow. Wow. Crazy stuff. If you're going to try to rip your voice off, practice a little better than that. Come on, man. You sound like I was from California. (laughs) Yeah. Not enough Tennessee in that. <laughs> There's no twang in that. Doug is in Grand Rapids. Hey, Doug, what's up? Hey, Dave and Ken. How are you guys doing today? Better than we deserve. What's up? Hey, excellent. I'm glad I'm speaking to you guys. I've been listening to the show for about six years now, and it's a little bit embarrassing to state that uh, my wife and I are not completely out of debt yet because we're what I like to say, and I hear you say on the show all the time, we're sort of Ramsey-ish. Mm-hmm. Um, we did successfully pay off $88,000 of student loans That's in good. 2021. That's good. Um, huge weight lifted off the shoulders, and with all the student loan speak going on right now, it's amazing to not have to deal with that. Um, but my question today has to do with Roth IRAs because we still have $62,000 in debt um, on three line items. Two of them are cars, and one is a camper. Um, How much do you owe on your camper? Camper, we owe twenty four thousand. Okay, so one third of this is a camper. Okay. Yep. Yep. And the other forty or thirty eight thousand is broken into how many? What kind of car? How much? Uh, we have one? a twenty seven on the Tahoe and nine or almost ten thousand on an Edge. Okay. All right. So you have a car and a camper problem. Okay. Yep. <laughs> um, now, what's your household income? That, 
we bring in gross about 160 a year, so we're only at about 41 percent of our annual income. Mm-hmm. So we're a little bit below the 50 percent that you teach. Okay, and so and, and you um, want to pull out your Roth? Well, the question is because I've actually listened to the show for six years and I've never heard this question, so I may have a good one. Um, and I know you teach not to pull from retirement because of the penalties and taxes associated with doing that. But in our case, we each, my wife and I, each have a Roth IRA. In my name, I have a Roth of ten thousand um, dollars, and she's got five thousand in her name. And my question was about the cash equivalents because no, it's obviously after tax. Absolutely dollars. not. This is not okay. a Roth problem or a tax problem or a penalty problem. This is a Doug problem. Mm-hmm. Doug, really? Behavior. You make a hundred and sixty grand, and you owe money on a camper. Yeah. Come on. Well, we do. We and you do want to cash out camper, your freaking but... retirement for a camper? <laughs> no. We also rent that out. Throughout no. The day. Yeah. No, Dave. I'm in the camper investment business. No, you're not. Yeah. You know better than that, dude. What's it worth? Do you have any it idea? It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It's gone. Yeah, that's what I I'm mean, getting. It's at. just Sell gone. It. It's depreciating quickly. Either you pay these cars and these campers off in the next 18 months out of your cash flow, and you guys quit being ish, or, mm. you know, because the, the, here's the problem. You keep treating the symptom. And, and yeah. you know, when you t- take this money out of retirement, and start with it's not enough to do spit. It's not enough money mm. in there. But if you did take it out, you keep treating the symptom. And the symptom is the debt. The problem yep. is the Doug. The Dougie. Okay, so. So you gotta, you guys are going to have to quit being ish. That's what we're saying. You're going to have to get on a decent plan. Get on it. Get on every dollar. You and your wife sit down and go, okay, we knocked out 88000 Now we look kind of foolish sitting here with these debts making one hundred and sixty grand. We make too much money to be this freaking broke. You have no money in retirement, Doug. I mean, you have five thousand dollars. It's pitiful. It's pitiful, and you make a hundred and sixty thousand dollars a year. Come on, man. This is the Ramsey Show. Hey guys, it's Rachel Cruz. It's open enrollment season, so it's a great time to explore your healthcare options for next year. If you feel tied down by your budget, check out Christian Healthcare Ministries. CHM is not health insurance. It's a faith-based health cost sharing ministry that has helped members take care of nearly $10 billion in healthcare costs. CHM is an affordable alternative to insurance that gives you the freedom and empowers you to live out your values. And you can join at any time. So find out more at chministries.org slash budget. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. In the lobby of Ramsey Solutions, we have a thing called the debt-free stage. We also have a viewing area where you can come in, get free homemade chocolate chip cookies and coffee. Come by and visit us if you're in town from Boise, Idaho, or something like that. So we got a group of uh, ladies sitting here on the front row. We just met them at the break from Boise. So, uh, hey, people come from all over America and visit Nashville, and sometimes we're one of the places they stop and see. We do this show on the glass from one to four every day central time and if you come and watch uh, you'll agree that it's pretty much like watching ugly paint dry but there you go so. mm. hey i don't resemble that <laughs> hey, hey watch hey. out what's happening hey but also we have the debt-free stage in that lobby and that's where mike and Lindsay are hey guys how are you hi, hi doing Dave. good hi, welcome Ken. where do you guys live st louis missouri there we go awesome and how much debt have you paid off uh three hundred and sixty thousand. yo how long did that take about 32 months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? Uh, 120000 to 350000 Okay. In three years, you double your over double your income. We did. Almost triple it. Yep. Wow. What do y'all do for a living? 
Uh, I am an internal medicine doctor. Ah, there we go. And I work in the financial services industry. Well, that's vague enough. Good. Okay. <laughs> All right. Excellent. So now, you, yeah, so that's a way to double or triple your income, the two of you. Excellent. Yes. Very good. So, uh, goodness, what kind of debt was the 360? Uh, mostly student loans. Uh -huh. About 346000 was student loans. And says, the rest, says the doc. Yeah. The rest was an investment loan and a car loan. Okay. Wow. Very cool. How long have you been on med school? Uh, about, well, out of medical school. No, I mean out of, out of residency and everything. About three years. About three years. So yeah. about this time. Yep. So you got out and you said, let's knock it out. Correct. Game on. Yep. All right. So what, how'd you get connected to this Ramsey stuff? What made y'all do this? Yeah. So um, we were probably Dave-ish. I had heard about the Dave Ramsey show before Lindsay and I got married, which was six years ago. And mm -hmm. we were on our honeymoon and uh, being the financial guy, I was uh, listening to the Dave Ramsey show podcast. Wow. Uh, and then Lindsay uh, being like, I think she was reading a book. <laughs> And she said, what are you doing? What are you listening to? And it was uh, the Dave Ramsey show. We listened to the podcast. Um, and that's how we got first connected. And then uh, my family gifted us uh, FPU for Christmas as ah, well. Oh, okay. And so then when she comes out of med school, no question of what we're going to do. Correct. We're going to knock this out. Pop. Yep. Yep. Done. 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 Very good. Lindsay, I got to ask you as the doctor in your world, did you share the process, the journey as you were doing it? And if you did... Uh, what did you find the reaction was? And, and I'm just curious how many other people that are in your shoes, the doctors that are actually even thinking about getting after it the way you all did. Uh, yeah, I mean, we talk pretty openly about it. Um, and honestly, most of the people are not doing what we did. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the people are doing public service loan forgiveness. Mm -hmm. um, or they just kind of are on the, you know, 10, 20 year plan. They'll eventually pay it off. You know, they make enough money. Um, they want like the big expensive house or the fancy car and all mm. that stuff. Doc Itis. Correct. Mm. Did they look at you, treat you like incredulously? Like, what are you thinking? No, never that type of situation. Mm. Just more so could tell that they didn't necessarily agree with it. Right. Like that would be nothing that they would ever do. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. But look at you. Yeah. Look at you. I'm completely free. 32 months. That's rowdy. Wow. That is very cool. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? Because you're successful at it. Um, I would say my key is uh, the budget. And then also we we always had like really short-term goals, but then also having the longer-term goals. We were always having goals that we wanted to get done within like, you know, a month or two. And then also what's our goal five to ten years from now? Like what do we want life to look like? Mm -hmm. So that's really what kept me going. Yeah, I, I would say like consistency. Mm -hmm. So like we knew how much money was – going towards debt and we set that goal from the beginning and just kept on going um and also um you guys have heard the phrase or used the phrase dream dates mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. that was that was huge for us like yeah. keep us motivated keep us going um look to the future mm -hmm. uh, and what legacy we want to leave behind yeah you gotta have a vision correct. Absolutely. For, for your life correct and uh when you have a shared dream then that's the living like no one else so that later we get to live and give like no one else. And that you got to have that later, you know, in sight in high definition and be able to tell what's really going on with it. Right. Way to go, you guys. Way to go. I'm curious. I, I, don't know if, I don't know if I've ever asked anybody this question, but you're a financial guy and you're in that world. And so you're pro probably academically trained like I was uh, the same way uh, because there's probably uh, – I don't know, two or 300 podcasts and radio shows on money out there. Uh, why, why, what, what was it that a financial guy goes, well, this is okay. I can listen to this. Yeah. I think for me, it was honestly, before getting married to Lindsay, I didn't know debt or have debt. Um, uh -oh. and I knew he just threw you under the bus. <laughs> I brought all the debt and Dave. backed over. Yeah, Wait, all the debt. I did have over. an investment oh, loan in a small car loan, but, uh, boom, boom. <laughs> but I think the biggest thing is we, uh, knew before marriage that we wanted to tackle the debt and with COVID and no interest, we wanted to get it out of our lives yeah. for good. I mean, why um, this, why, why so were we could, you listening to this show? Dave, it's because of your personality. Oh, my God. Uh, <laughs> uh, you Hold and on, I let me would... scoot over so his head can fit in here. Hold on. <laughs> you and I. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, no, I just really liked uh, the principles, the baby steps. Uh, okay. Now we're on four, five, and six. It made sense. It made, it made sense clear to me. path. The clear Correct. path made sense. Yeah. Correct. Okay. That that I'll buy. <laughs> Way to go, you guys. We're very proud of you. Congratulations. Thank you. And uh, also, you've had a baby. Yes. All right. And brought you brought him with you, right? We did. Yes. He's okay. four now, no uh-huh. longer a baby. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Very cool. Very cool. So six years married, four-year-old, and 32 months a- after med school, boom, this is gone. Hey, we got a copy of the uh, Baby Steps Millionaire's book for you in the Live and Give box and the, ba- the Total Money Makeover book and a Financial Peace University membership. <laughs> Probably got all those already, but you can give them away and uh, find somebody who wants them. And so what's the four-year-old's name? Christopher. All right, Christopher. Here we go, man. You ready? Your mom and dad have changed your life, buddy. You don't even know how much yet. You have a family tree that has been changed by, by two heroes right here. $360,000 paid off in 32 months, making 120 to 350 Mike, Lindsay, and Christopher from St. Louis. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, Three two, two, one. one. We're, We're debt-free! Free! Yeah! <laughs> That is how it's done. You gotta love it. So, Ken, there is an antidote to the student loan crisis, mm. and uh, we just observed it. Yeah, there's human beings taking responsibility because the private student loan forgiveness that she said some of these docs are counting on has a 1.6 percent success rate. Mm. 98.4 percent of the people that apply for that do not get it. That's all of them. So these docs have screwed up by betting their their futures on the private student loan forgiveness, uh, public student loan forgiveness act. It's it doesn't work. It's another time your government has lied to you. And so we're going to be having this coming Tuesday night. Jade Washaw, Rachel Cruz, me are going to be doing a free live stream. For a couple of hundred thousand of you that are going to be viewing, it's at 7 p.m. Central Time this coming Tuesday night. Student loan debt in America, how we got here and how we're going to get out. We're going to show you some real solutions. This is Ramsey Solutions. That's what we're here for. And we're not here for something that's going to, if, if you're looking for easy I, I don't. I can't help you with easy. If you're looking for microwave and quick, I can't help you with that. We sell crock pots, baby. Thirty-two months. They've been scratching and clawing those folk. Thirty-two months. They went through Financial Peace University. They listened to the podcast. They've read the books. Thirty-two months of nothing, and now they're free. Three hundred and sixty thousand dollars in debt. Wow. Yeah, go to RamseySolutions.com slash student loans and sign up for Tuesday night. This is The Ramsey Show. Ken Coleman Ramsey personality is my co-host today. Joe's with us in Houston, Texas. Hi, Joe. How are you? Pretty good. Uh, so my question today, Dave and uh, Ken, is uh, I work for an automation supplier company for the oil and gas industry. I've been here for almost a year. My responsibilities have increased uh, a lot more than I thought they would, and I would like to bring up uh, – getting a raise to uh, to my leadership and stuff like that and kind of wanted to know about how to go about doing that. How much – have you got a number in your mind, a percentage that you've done some research on, or is this just a hunch and a feeling? Uh, so so I'm, I'm definitely making less than what I was previously with the job I left in, you know, uh, where we were maintenancing the solutions that were uh, being sold by – by uh, different companies and now i'm designing and implementing those uh 
so I took a pay cut to come to this job for more freedoms, more responsibilities, and chances to grow. And the number I've got is about 12 to 15 percent. Is what you want as a raise. Yes. And you've been there a year. Have you had an annual review, or is that process in place? Uh, so I had a six-month review, and everything was everything with that was was gold stars, and Great. from what I was told. So and, uh, when did the increased responsibilities get put on you? Give me a timeline. At the six-month mark. And and you were told this. It was like, hey, here's what we're doing. You're doing a great job. Gold stars. Now we're going to add this, 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 and this. Is that how it went? Yes. Did you bring up, okay, hey, I'm glad for the review. Uh, is there an increase in comp? What's that look like? How am I measured? Did you bring that up at the time? So I brought that up at the time, and the company I work for is growing. And uh, so they were like, okay, we're going to push off your raise. And so, so then I asked for a 6%. They said we're going to push it off till October. Well, then the responsibilities that was it was supposed to increase it's gone beyond that in the in the six months mm -hmm. because we're we're developing a new a new department for for our branch and I've been kind of given that. Okay, and that's now what do in you between. make? I make eighty two five. Okay, and so you're asking for like ten grand. Yeah. Okay. All right. And they're supposed to review it in October anyway, so just a few weeks. Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. Um, I'd hold the line. I'd hold the line on the number if, and again, Dave, I, I want you in the in Yeah, the but it's, it's, all, it's all the narrative of how you couch it, okay? Yeah. So just the, the best way to do a lot of these things, especially in business, is just trade shoes for a minute. Mm -hmm. Okay? If you're the leader, you're the owner, you're the manager of, that's making these decisions, okay, how would you want to be? Uh, addressed how would you want this conversation to sound and, okay. and I, i'm an owner of a company i'll tell you how i want it to sound um i'm happy to talk to anybody about their comp uh, i'm happy for them to talk to leadership here anytime about their comp uh and and you know here's the thing you're not entitled to anything you okay. earn it and you have said you're earning it but, I mean, I had one guy come in my office, Joe, a few years ago, and he's like, well, I've got this degree and that degree. The poor guy had more degrees than a thermometer. And he, he <laughs> said, you know, people that have degrees like me at other places, you know, they make uh, $50,000 more a year than I'm paying. And I said, yeah, I, then you're, you're paying me. I said, I understand that, but we don't pay for degrees here. This is a small business, honey. Your raise is effective when you are. Okay. And so that's what the owner's looking for. Your raise is effective when you are. You've made the case to me, listening to you, that you've been effective and you've gotten the increased responsibility and you're stepping up and you're taking emotional ownership of these areas. And so you're a valuable team member is what it sounds like to me. And so, but the way you want to couch it if you're on the other side of the desk is how, Joe? I mean, think about it. You want to say, uh, not I deserve more money, simply go, I think I'm adding a lot of value. Do you think I'm adding a lot of value? If I'm adding value, I need to ask you, how do I go about talking to you guys in a proper way without sounding ungrateful? Because I'm very grateful. I love this place. Yeah. I love the opportunity. I love the growth. I love the added responsibility. Um, and, I, you know, w what's the right way, if you're me, to ask you guys about compensation? And I... I I'd really like to make more, and what do I need to? Do? Is there anything I'm not doing that I'm that I'm do? You know, is there anything I can add, or is there some, do I need to do something different to qualify for some increased compensation? And if somebody okay. says to me, "How can I? What can I do to make myself more valuable so you want to give me more money?" That's an easy. That's an easy thing for me as an owner. I can do that one. Okay. I can go. Okay, because you know. Like I had a guy one time, he's working on a deal and he brought in an extra million dollars. That really happened. That blew my mind. He he just, he added this thing to a deal. He was doing, negotiating a deal for us and he added this thing. And, and so, and his commission structure did not pay him on that million dollars. But you know what? We paid him anyway. You know why? Because yeah. I want him to do that again. <laughs> okay, because he added value. You see what I'm talking about? So a lot of value in that case. That's a big number. But the the thing is here, I, I think you say, I am I I think I'm adding value. Am I adding value? And if I'm not adding enough, what do I need to be doing to qualify 
for increased compensation because I really want to be one of your best team members, and I also want to make some good money. And tell me how to do that, man. Yeah, I agree with that. However, I would also add to this, Joe, they promised you a 6%. I, I would ignore that because I, I think he's due a lot more than 6. 6% is a joke in this. It, yeah, maybe. Uh, he needs he needs he needs got to make, have some marketplace research on that yeah. like if somebody comes to us and says yeah but he's a, he's on a startup and they're they're adding stuff right. they're adding new products yeah. they're adding new projects and things to his plate left and right left and right he and he's making 80 already he's yeah. he's worth another 10 i think he is but he's got to make that case and i'm just pointing out that he's going in asking for 12 to 15 they've asked six he I, needs to show market range i ranges. wouldn't ask for 12 15 i would, I would ask oh i thought open-ended question Okay, because he was saying he we wants We had talked 12. about six back in the summer. I feel like I'm doing all these right. things. What have I got to do? Yeah. Oh, what I have agree. I, I always say that, yeah. too. And, yeah. and, you know, that kind of thing. And and then if they come back at six, you go, okay, I need to know what I got to do to get double that. Because mm-hmm. mm-hmm. I kind of thought I was in that zone, right. and apparently I'm not. Yeah. So and they've added responsibilities. Yeah. And, so he you know, if you out. talk to me that way and you don't, you don't start trying to – but let me, as soon as somebody starts playing hardball with us at Ramsey on yeah. uh, raise negotiation, right. we just go, you know, it's probably not going to work out here. Right. Because right. we're not going to, you know, you're going to negotiate. Come on. I mean, yeah. ask how you can help. Yeah. And if you kill it and drag it in here, we'll share it with you, baby. Yeah. I mean, it's not, we're not greedy. But, but you know, just I show up every day and breathe. And so I get money. Right. That's not what Joe's doing. Right. But if you if you're out there and you think, well, I just show up every day and I'm you know I actually took a shower daily, and I expect a raise. I mean, come on, man. There's no just shower daily raise. Mm-hmm. That's there's not one of those. So um, you know it's crazy what's out there and the way people think about this stuff. So you know here's the thing: if you want to be an extremely valuable team member, always be asking what you how you can add value, how I can lift the place not what i can take from it so if we're interviewing someone and the first two sentences all they want to know is what they get then we're done with the interview because they're there to take they're not there to add they're going to work a job work as little as possible come in late leave early and steal while they're there and so you want to present that the exact opposite of that scenario I agree when you're uh interviewing or when you're negotiating, so to speak, for a raise. But it's not negotiating. No, it's, it's asking not. leading questions. Yes, and also being informed in what you're asking. You know, we had a sure guy come in the other day in, in one of our technology roles, a very unusual niche role, but he said, I got a, I got a recruiter coming at me, offering me X more, and he goes, I don't want to leave. But it's a crazy amount of money. He goes, what should I do? And and, and that's a way to approach it. Not yeah, like, I love that. if you don't match this guy, I'm out of here. Right. Because we'd be going, see you, wouldn't want to be you, you know? <laughs> That's right. And, um, but, but if he comes in and goes that, you know what? We, we were not able to match it, but he wanted to stay. Mm-hmm. We were able to respond to his situation and make him feel good about staying by mm-hmm. giving him a great raise. Yeah. And it was, it was an unscheduled raise. Hello. So that's okay. All that's fine. But th- this is a, how you, the attitude you approach it. Are you a giver or are you a taker? Are you a parasite? Or are you someone that's adding to the whole process? And if you're adding to the process and the people don't respect that with your in your wallet, you probably need to look for another place. Joe, I think you got a good situation and you're a good guy. This is going to work out for you. This is The Ramsey Show. Hey, it's Ken. If you love the show and want a deeper dive on your money journey, we have a weekly newsletter that gives you trending and helpful articles and tips on following the Ramsey way. Go to RamseySolutions.com today to sign up for our newsletter. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com to sign up for our weekly newsletter. Live from the headquarters of Ramsey Solutions, it's the Ramsey Show, where we help people build wealth, do work that they love, and create actual amazing relationships. Thanks for joining us, America. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, number one best-selling author of the book Paycheck to Purpose, is my co-host. He hosts also the Ken Coleman Show on Sirius XM, has a podcast here on the Ramsey Networks, and uh, very popular, answering your questions about jobs and work and career 
and uh, you can find him every day doing that. And, of course, be sure and check in with us here today. He'll help you, too. The phone number, 888-825-5225. Alex is in Cleveland, Ohio. Hi, Alex. How are you? I'm great. Thanks for taking my call. Sure. What's up? I'm trying to prioritize um, my money between my mortgage, saving for retirement, and replacing my car after all my budget expenses are covered. So if I put everything extra towards the house, I could pay it off in six years, which sounds great. But my parents prioritize paying off their house before retirement, so now they don't really have retirement. Okay. How old are you? I'm 33. Okay. So if you did that, you'd be 39 years old. Exactly. So mathematically, you would not be your parents. Because you definitely could save a lot for retirement if you had no house payment between now and retirement, between 39 and 65, right? That's a good point. Okay. Yeah. So your parents, your parents, the fear that came from your parents' situation is not valid in your case. However, I'm still not going to tell you to do that, but I just think it's good to work out the math for a second. Now, um, so you're out of debt, everything but the house, right? Correct. And you have an emergency fund of three to six months of expenses set aside, correct? Right. I have 15000 Good. Okay then you're at what we call baby step four. Baby step four is, say, 15% of your income, no more, into retirement. If you have no payments but a house payment, 15% of your income going into retirement should leave you some money in your budget. And then leave about ba- 500 if I do that. What's your household income? 77000 pre-tax, post-tax, and ends up being about fifty-seven. Mm-hmm. And how much is your house payment? It is, let's see, I wrote that down. Where did it go? Um, $1,330. Okay. How are you paying off your house in six years if you save nothing? I don't hear that in these numbers. Mm, I have an extra 1300 each month. Oh, I thought you said you had an extra 500 each month. That would be if I put into retirement. Oh, I see. So if you put 800 into retirement, you'd have 500 to go towards the car. Okay. And so it. what's your current car worth? Um, Roughly 6000 because it's a 2000 what, what do you want to spend on the next car? I'm going to need to spend at least 10 maybe 15 if I buy used, which is the plan. Okay. So if you buy 15 and your current one's worth six, you need nine. Right. And that takes, uh, what, it, says, it takes... Not even a year. Well, it takes you know, it takes a little over a year. It takes about 14, 15 months to save that up at 500 a month, right? Exactly. Okay. So 14 or 15 months, you got your car upgrade. Meanwhile, you're putting 15% of your income in, and then we'll start paying extra on the house. I'd only have 500 extra to go towards the hospital. I know. If I, would... I know. But you have, you've also you've extrapolated out into the distant future no raises. That's true, too. Yeah. So it's a miss. So the reality is, is you're going to pay off the house probably in six or seven years while putting 15% away, while replacing this car with a decent thing. Everything you've described to me is very sane. You are not a cray cray American. You're not out of control. <laughs> Thank you. I mean, really, you, you're, you're very level headed. I mean, you, I, I was a bit afraid you were going to say $35,000 car and I was going to have a small cow right here on the radio. Okay. <laughs> So, no, well, mom, ra- mom, raised, mom and dad raised us so yeah, differently from that. I'm telling you. So you, you really have your, 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 your feet on the ground in a beautiful way. you got a lot of common sense, kiddo. So you're going to be fine. Yeah. So the thing is this. You're going to accomplish everything. The, the way we ran out the case studies and the way we've talked to literally millions of people that we've made into millionaires is that – this idea, if you're putting 15% away, don't put more than that, but don't put less than that. You're going to end up a multimillionaire with that alone, and you're going to get the house paid off on average, and your numbers are not different than that. Uh, you know, under 10 years, it might be 7, it might be 6.5, and it depends on the curve on your raise as well, how quick you, how much your that raise goes fun. up. And I'm what, curious. What, what do you what, do for a living? Yeah, I want to know this. Yeah, I work in marketing for a, a small company. I'm just wondering, Alex, if you aren't, thinking about the gig economy, freelance marketing after hours to speed up this buy a new car fund. I would really be considering that if you have the margin in your life with your skill set in today's marketplace, 
Uh, freelance work as a marketer, that's what I would be doing to get the car paid for. What kind of marketing are you doing for this small company? Um, like mostly website design, flyers, social media, mm-hmm. helping them write content. Mm-hmm. What I love doing is like talking with engineers and then getting them to speak in English instead of geek. Mm. <laughs> that's a full-time job. Uh, it's also extremely <laughs> valuable. You're a translator in a digital economy. Um, the, uh, so let me, sometimes, and you tell me if I'm wrong, but sometimes when someone says, I'm a marketer at a small company, the small company part of the phrase is code for, I feel like I'm not being paid what I could make somewhere else. Yeah, they're very fair, but. No, that wasn't what I asked. Did you say that accidentally in that statement? Yeah. Like you make 70, but you think if you moved over yonder, you might make 90. Yeah. Yeah. I'd be thinking about that. Yeah. Yep. And freelance. I can't say that enough. Yeah. And and lots of freelance stuff on the side. Because if you can do digital translation from the digital humans to the non-digital humans, you have a skill. How would you start tracking down freelance things? Well, you got to look at Fiverr, but it's so many international people that it's yeah. really hard to find a gig. Nah. No, not international. You just start looking in your area. Uh, you're just getting on the internet. You're talking to people. There, there's a lot of freelance work. There's a couple of sites. I don't want to endorse them because I haven't done a ton of research other, on them. Other companies They're like everywhere. your company that cannot afford a full-time yeah. marketer. Yeah. Uh, would buy it, would, would pay for some side gig uh, contractor work it's to get there. the same, exact same work done in that situation. Because um, we have a lot of folks inside of our building that do what you do. They're, they're digital translators. I never called them that before today, but they, that's what they do. <laughs> and so you get on a squad with the digital teams, and then you have to learn to speak their language. And then we also have to learn that the consumer, you know, what's the consumer facing after we write this code? What's it look like? How's it sound? How's it feel? And that kind of stuff. Exactly. So, yeah, that's exactly what you're doing. And that's a, I'm telling you, that's a very valuable skill in the marketplace right now. I think you're worth more than you're getting paid, probably. You made to think about that. You're an amazing. It's fun to talk to you. You're amazing. Very well done. Very well done. You're going to be very wealthy. You don't have, have to worry. If you keep keep using the brain the way you're using your brain right now, you're going to be very wealthy. Your, your decision-making skills, your thought paradigm is excellent. This is The Ramsey Show. Ken Coleman, Ramsey personality, is my co-host today. Thank you for joining us, America. We're so glad you're here. Open phones at 888-825-5225. Hey, guys, um, we can use your help. If you want to help us out, it doesn't cost you a thing. If you will click subscribe or follow or whatever it is on your podcast or your YouTube or whatever, and just let you know, just sign up. It changes the algorithm, moves the show up in the rankings, and causes other people to know we're here. It's a free way you can say thank you to us. And uh, so click follow, click that, and use the share button. And if there's not a share button, just share. Tell people tell people, or t- take clip, click a link out and go, okay, hey, I saw this. You guys got to watch, start watching the show. You, got, you won't believe it. You got to start listening to this show. You won't believe it. And, uh, cause it's absolutely phenomenal how many of you are there. Thank you. Uh, the number of minutes being downloaded is just astronomical, uh, on the different uh, versions. It's absolutely crazy. And we appreciate you. Thank you very much. Leave the five-star review, you know, all those kinds of things really help change the algorithm of whether these different services push the show to the front and, and make it as a suggestion or not. So thank you. Austin is in Milwaukee. Hi, Austin. Welcome to the Ramsey show. Hi, thanks for taking my call. It's a pleasure speaking with you. Sure. What's up? 
Uh, so I'll try to make it quick here, but I have a two-part question that kind of revolves around my career that I was hoping to get some answers or maybe suggestions on what I could do as I've been listening to you for quite some time now and ever since. I've been trying to do everything right, um, but I seem to back myself in a corner here with uh, work and any further work uh, to major my income growth. Um, and I I'm so I'm 23 years old and I'm truck driving for a career. I'm a regional over the road uh, trucker, so not uh, coast to coast or anything. I make about 62k base gross pay, but after all my overtime, I'll gross roughly around 85k a year, which is uh, 5k a month after taxes and uh, Roth 401k contributions. I have no debt, although I'm looking to make more money only because I feel like I'm meant to do more. And I love my career and company I work for. So switching companies isn't something I'm really looking to do, even though certain companies out there I could get starting at 105 k a year by trading more of my time for money and staying on the road longer, which I know is a big battle between making money and taking your time. The only problem with being a trucker, though, is that I'm restricted on how much I can work uh, with a side gig, if I would, or more so a side job. As legally, you're only allowed to work 14 hours a day and a max of 70 hours a week. But between each 70-hour work week, you need to be resting for 34 hours with no pay, even if it's a non-driving job. Um, and so the only solution I would have to think about getting is a under-the-rug pay, uh, cash pay job. and uh, or do I just accept a fate and make an extra 20K by switching companies uh, okay. while looking to try to make more? Yeah. So what's more important to you? Is it is it staying in the, the driving position, you really love it, and then having this time that you have now? Or is making more money? What's more important? Because you gave us the whole scenario, but it, it comes down to what is the biggest priority for you? Yeah. I mean, I, you know, it it's, it's funny because I do enjoy my free time, but there's m most weekends that uh, I'm either not doing something and I'm just sitting there kind of uh, not having anything to do, and then I feel like I could be doing more. Well, you can be. So here's what I don't understand. So forgive my ignorance. Is this the regulation of the company saying, no, hey— it's, it's federal regulation. It's a federal regulation. Yeah, you're not allowed to drive. So he, so you can't—yeah, but he can't—did uh, I understand that you can't work? You can't do anything, any outside work, and receive uh, income because if it's reported, it's outside the federal regulation. Is that what I'm understanding? I could during the week, but I'm not home during the week except for one or I two days, maybe. I got that part. Maybe. All right, I'm going that yeah. direction. Okay. So legally, we can do something. It's just during the week. So what is? how many hours do you have on a regular week where you're not behind the wheel of a car? Uh, typically, it's about, well, you got 48 during the weekends because we get off weekends. And then it's typically uh, about 12 to 20 throughout okay. the week. All right. So 12 to 20 hours is what you can work with to do something else because you said i feel like i'm supposed to do more so we have to first look at what inventory of time you have to do other work now we've got 12 to 20 hours so now you start getting into well what is it that i would do if i wasn't in the truck what would this different type of work be i believe you've got those ideas i don't think a guy like you calls and doesn't have an idea to so what would you do if you weren't limited to the truck this other idea of work doing something more what is it well i've I guess I've always uh, had a had a not, I, guess, I don't know if you call it a dream, but I've always uh, wanted to start my own business. As I've had a really good idea with it, and doing I what could spend. What's the business? Um, uh, it would be well, I'd make a business uh, with protein bars because um, I actually am a bodybuilder, and that's one struggle I found with a nut allergy is there is not a single protein bar on the market that okay. uh, doesn't contain nuts or at least manufactured All right. in the same facility. All right, so let's make this big dream. Let's bring it way down for a second. Let's play with this. 12 to 20 hours. That's just if you were actually working for somebody, but you've got a whole lot more time to be able to, to look into what would it look like to put together a prototype bar 
that doesn't have the nuts in it or whatever it is that you've got figured out. You can figure out who's making these things. How many different companies across the nation are putting together protein bars, just like a manufacturer in any other business. And now I start to research and I figure it out and I, I figure out what it's going to cost me, who would make it. Can I just sample it? You've got all this time, even behind the wheel of a truck, to be listening to maybe podcasts about how to come up with a strategy to launch something like this. There are people that do this kind of stuff. It's free. So you become an expert in what it would take to launch a protein bar. That's it. We start there. Because if this is the dream, then we're not going to just launch into the protein bar business. There's a whole lot of work. So you're using all this time to become an expert in what needs to happen. Then we look at the finance piece. What's that going to cost? And so now you've got a plan. Here's what I would have to do. Here's how much it's going to cost. And so now you begin to save that money and you go slow. You don't risk a lot of money. You try it. You test it. This is a process. So I would be putting that desire to play in very practical ways, as I just described. And then over time, you might see yourself going, all right, I got to take a different trucking job to make more money to come up with an extra 20000 to put into my first protein bar. And I've already got several local stores that are willing to carry it. I don't have a ton of inventory, which means I don't have a ton of risk. And I begin to put it out there and I see, does this bar go somewhere? Maybe you look into it enough where you go, you know what? I'm going to transition from the truck to actually working for a protein supplement company because I can do that. I can work for them. Is this entrepreneurial or is it an actual professional path? All of that will become clear if you take your time and use all that extra hours and energy to dive into what is it going to take to do this thing? And that's that's how I do it. Yeah, you're the way you're describing your situation is that uh there's only two options right. doing what you're doing or not doing what you're doing. And um because you're you're looking at it as an all or nothing instead of an incremental by degree change. Mm -hmm. And so what I would do is pan back and say, okay, I'm twenty three. When I'm thirty three, what do I want to be doing? What are then the then what must be true that's not true today for me to be able to do that? And, and then you start making okay, there's 32 steps to get there over the next 10 years. Over the next 10 years, we'll start taking those 32 steps, and that's what Ken was describing the first steps of the 32 steps. But you just begin by degrees moving in the right direction a little bit at a time, and that method of thinking will uh, cause you to be able to move forward versus. I, I, I'm stuck. You're not stuck. You can do the little steps in the right direction right now. That's what Ken's describing for you. This is The Ramsey Show. Ken Coleman, Ramsey Personality, is my co-host today. Thanks for joining us in the lobby of Ramsey Solutions on the debt-free stage. Joe and Emily are with us. Hey, guys, how are you? Doing great. Doing good. Good. Where do you guys live? Uh, just outside Madison, Wisconsin, in a town called Baraboo. Wow, very cool. Welcome to Nashville. And how much debt have you paid off? $72,108. Way to go. And how long did this take? 14 and a half months. Good for you. And your range of income during that time? We started out at about 170 and we finished up at about 200. Excellent. Cool. What do y'all do for a living? I am the guy that everybody curses when they try to get into those plastic packaging. Uh, you're you, the plastic packaging guy. I'm the plastic packaging guy. I'm that guy. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Are you talking like when you get like a, a box in the mail and you can't even get it open with an X-Acto knife? Yep, that's that me. That level? That's, that's him. Me. I really do curse you. <laughs> 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 I felt so good. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Well, what do you do, Emily? I am a quality systems engineer. All right. Very cool. Well, you guys are doing well. Congratulations. What kind of debt was the 72000 it was a mix between credit cards, we had an ATV, um, 
a HELOC loan that we did use for some uh, home improvements and uh, a school pledge for our church and finally a land loan. So during the height of COVID, we went and purchased uh, about 11 acres. Of course you did. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'd been looking for land for quite a while and we just couldn't find anything that we really, really liked. And then this one just happened to pop up. It's like, nope, this is it. We just knew it in our bones. This was it. So what happened 14 and a half months ago that changed everything? Because you guys were kind of normal. You're just buying stuff on credit, right? And then you looked up and went, this sucks. We're not doing this. What happened? Well, actually, the story goes back a little further. Um, Today is actually our sixth wedding anniversary. Oh, congratulations. And uh, prior to us getting married, I was a single mom living paycheck to paycheck and had over $70,000 in student loans. Mm. Um, when Joe and I got married, um, he basically took a look at me and said, uh, can we do the best we possibly can to live on one income, essentially, and um, basically everything that I was bringing in, throw it at the, those student loans. Mm-hmm. And uh, we got married. Um, long story short, um, struggled a lot with contentment during that time. Um, realizing that you know we were we did have a good income but trying to live on that one paycheck and um, I switched jobs in 2021 um, and (laughs) the great resignation kind of turned into I don't know I was kind of looking at the great regret yeah and um, just trying to get through each day at work, I was listening to music, uh, streaming music to get through my day. And one day, I just happened to think, you know, I'll turn a podcast on instead. Um, and I, I call it that God thing that must have happened. I just happened to turn on the Ramsey Show, which mm-hmm. I wasn't very familiar with. Mm-hmm. And I, it That's just, my best promotional item, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> it just so happened that I was listening to an episode one day, and it was Ken Coleman and Dave Ramsey. Oh, and, wow. And um, you were talking about uh, that very thing that I was living with, about changing jobs and feeling like basically you had wrecked your career by making that change. Mm-hmm. And I was really, really in a dark place at that time, really, really hurting. And um, listening to what the two of you were saying about, um, you know, basically being a slave to the lender. And as soon as you get your debts paid off, you can go do and explore what you're really passionate about. Mm -hmm. And... um, I didn't know what the baby steps were at that point, but I heard something about an FPU class, and <laughs> I, I I knew I needed to get that career assessment first of all because yeah. <laughs> I I didn't know what I I didn't know ever if I was doing the right thing or the wrong thing mm-hmm. at that point. I just I just needed needed some guidance, and so I wanted the, that career assessment. I I needed to uh, get out of debt. So you go home and tell Joe so, all this, and Joe's like. Okay. Awesome. This is, yeah. what, this is what I've been saying. Yeah. This is she, what I've been saying. She had a great big. But speech. now what happened was what happened was uh, Emily, you got a reason to do yeah. it. All of a sudden, the reason was escaping the crappy job and the toxic environment, right? Mm-hmm. So I got to get this cleaned up so I don't have to come into work. I don't have to do mm-hmm. this. Yeah. It wow. changes everything. Very cool. Yeah. It's a great why. You got to have a big old why. Yeah. If you're gonna do stuff, you have to have a reason to do it. So all right, let's fast forward. Yeah. So you're on board, right? Yep. And, and, and so you guys go, let's get after this. When you got into it, was there a moment in the journey where you hit that big momentum, where you really, you both saw the finish line? We can do this. I think so. I mean, even when we first started, it was like, wow, the money, we have, we got money that we didn't know we had. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not a budget guy. I'm not a guy that goes out and just spends just to spend but I'm not. No. No, I don't. I really don't. <laughs> but I like I like you know tools and stuff like that. And if it's something I can use around the house, I have no problem going out and buying it. But so I wasn't crazy with it. But 
going down and doing the budget and sitting down every month and you know, we could like, do it this was, fast. There's was money like, here. Yeah, it was like pulling teeth to get me to do it. Yeah. But once I started seeing the money yeah. showing up out of nowhere, it's like, wow, where did all this come so from? So the budget Gold reveals and them the money. their heels. Yeah. Yeah. And wow. there's the momentum because you yeah. now have we can actually nail this. Yeah. yeah. That's great. Uh, there's a light at the end of the tunnel that's not an oncoming train. Yeah, and then it became fun because <laughs> yeah. it was, wow, we were watching these numbers just click off. Yeah, I guess it's like boom, wow. boom, 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 boom. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. What do you tell people the key to getting out of debt is? I've been telling people, look into your resources. Um as, as far as side hustles, we had our little side hustles that we did, but we also found other resources. Um, we have friends that have a hobby farm, and we were able to assist them on that farm, and <laughs> it cut our grocery budget significantly because we were able to get the fresh fruits, fresh vegetables oh, from the farm. Smart. And yeah. um, what Joe is really good at, canning and preserving <laughs> oh yeah like hey, so, mr so, yep. package pro here <laughs> yeah <laughs> yep. i love it i love it way to go you guys how does it feel it's amazing to be free for the first time in six years and really more than that it's it's amazing um we had a family medical emergency just a couple uh months ago with a family member and to be able to step back and say you know what we can do what we need to at this moment and not have to worry about Mm. um the money side of it was was such a relief that's a big deal that's a Mm -hmm. big deal way to go you guys we're proud of you heroes you're amazing (laughs) Man, I just they're kind of a little bit like floating. They're not quite touching the ground. Yet. <laughs> pretty, pretty good. That's pretty neat. That's pretty cool. Very cool. And, and you brought your daughter with you, right? What's her name yes, and age? Uh, Reagan. She's thirteen. All right, way to go. All right, so Reagan's whole life has been changed too. This mm-hmm. is pretty amazing. Hey, we've got the uh, Live and Give box for you. It's the Baby Steps Millionaires book, the Total Money Makeover book, and the Financial Peace University membership. Give it away. Use it however you want to do it. It's our way of saying thank you and our way of saying congratulations. Well done. Very well done. Joe, Emily, and Reagan, Madison, Wisconsin area, 72000 paid off in 14 and a half months, making 170 to 200. Count it down. Let's hear a debt-free scream. Three, two, one. We're, We're debt-free. debt-free. Yeah. <laughs> This is how it's done. I love it. Man, what cool people. This is The Ramsey Show. Our scripture of the day, Philippians 3, 13 and 14. One thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead. I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Benjamin Franklin said, the Constitution only gives people the right to pursue happiness. You have to catch it yourself. Boy, is that relevant today. Man. That's a mouthful. (laughs) That's a mic drop. I gotta love it. Mic drop by old Ben. Jeremy's with us. Jeremy is in Tucson, Arizona. Hi, Jeremy. Welcome to the Ramsey Show. Thank you. Thank you for taking my call. Sure. How can we help? Uh, so, quick question. My son, youngest son, got himself stuck into a whole life policy. And, of course, I want to talk him out of it, get him to invest in something else. Mm-hmm. So, I know the biggest hook is he can borrow against his policy. Mm-hmm. I know that with the 401k, you'll get penalized. Mm-hmm. 
which leads me to maybe mutual funds, which I don't know a whole lot about. Mm -hmm. So I was wondering what's the major difference between the 401k and a mutual fund that he may be able to borrow against in the future. Okay. Um, how old is your son? He's 23. Okay. All right. Um, well, I, I don't think, um, I mean, number one, let's just, let's just ask the question. Why is he going to listen to you? Well, I've had really good, really good relationship with him. And the whole reason he got himself stuck in here was because I kept pushing for, uh, to invest, to save money, to think about his future. Yeah, but, he, came, but then he picked a bad way of doing it. Right. And when you say, son, this is a dumb the, way of doing it, it's not a good investment program, what does he say? Oh, I can borrow he, against it? That's his big hook, yes. Okay. Well, no one ever got rich borrowing their investments. Right. They invest and them and they forget them. completely against it. Yeah, borrowing against it is not a, is not a method of wealth building. That's a method of selling right. insurance, crappy insurance, but it's not a method of wealth building. Right, and that's what got him in. He was actually looking for health and disability and death insurance is where, is where he started looking, yeah. and then they hooked him on the whole life policy. Yeah. So, I mean, my, my point is is that uh, we can answer your question. A, a 401k is not an investment. It is how an investment is treated for taxes. Typically, inside of a 401k, you're going to find mutual funds. So you have a mutual fund that's either covered with a coat keeping it warm from taxes, and the coat is called a 401k or an IRA or a Roth IRA, or it has no coat and it's out in the cold and has taxed. But in both cases, it's still a mutual fund. Could be the exact same mutual fund. And, um, but wealthy people don't build their investments in order to borrow against them. And so if he wants to become wealthy, he's picked a really bad way of doing it, number one, borrowing against it. Number two, he's picked a, the, probably one of the worst financial products alive today and uh, it is the whole life policy because it has a horrible rate of return. In the first three years that you pay 20X, 20 times more for the same amount of life insurance. So you buy a $100,000 whole life policy, you buy a $100,000 term policy. It, if the $100,000 whole life if policy is $100 a month, the $100,000 the $100, term policy is $5 a month. That's what research tells us. So it's 20 times more expensive. $95 extra per hundred. Okay. Now, where okay. does that go? It goes into an investment called cash value. And so you, and the cash value has no buildup for the first two to three years. They keep 100% of your investment as commissions. The first three years, you have zeros on your cash value buildup the first three years. Well, that sucks. And once you get past having a really front-loaded, horrible commission off the front end and it finally starts making money, the average whole life policy, according to research, averages 1.2% rate of return. Not going to get rich on that either. Oh, and then when you finally get past all of that, if you actually build it up, you can borrow and pay them interest to use your money. So if you have a savings account and you want to borrow and you want to take money out of your savings account, you don't have to pay money. You just take money out of your savings account. But with a whole life policy, you want to take money out, you have to pay them interest to use your money that you paid 20 times more to build up. This thing sucks. Oh, and it's even worse than that. You finally build up inside your whole $100,000 policy, $20,000 worth of cash value, and then you screw around and die, which we all do. Oh, guess what happens to your 20000 that you paid $95 extra per month to build up after getting past horrible rates of return and no, and no, and no build up at all for the first three years because they kept it all as a commission. Once you finally get 20000 in there and you die, they pay $100,000. They keep your savings account. So if you had a savings account at the bank, and, and, or if I started pitching you a savings account on TikTok and I said, hey, here's your savings account. The first three years you put money in, 
Nothing happens. We keep it all. After that, it makes 1.2%. And when you die, you lose your money. No one would put money in that. That's a whole life policy. So nobody ought to put money in a whole life policy. So you can just play this rant back for your son, Jeremy, when it comes out on the podcast and it'll answer his it's question. Perfect. It's exactly what I would do. And I'm not even, I mean, that's exactly, son, watch this. Yeah, this is just, don't yeah. do it. Don't do it. You got, <laughs> son of Jeremy, you have been screwed by the life insurance industry and they are very good at their business of screwing people. It's unbelievable. Horrible product. Let me tell you. If you're poor, the way they get you is the pawn shops. The way they get you is the rent to own. The way they get you is the payday lender. The way they get you is lottery tickets. If you're middle class, the way they get you is they make you believe you're going to get rich on airline miles using your stupid credit card. Well, that's a dumb butt idea. The way they get you is they get you into a whole life policy. That's a dumb butt idea. The way they get you is they go, sophisticated rich people lease their cars. No, they don't. No, they don't. It's a dumb butt middle class thing to do. So the whole life policy is the, is the payday lender of the middle class. It's a signal that you intend to be in the middle class and stay there the rest of your life because you got screwed by the insurance companies. And I got to tell you, man, if you don't like that and you sell whole life, you need to actually learn how your product works. And then if you have integrity, you'll quit selling that crap because there's only two types of people that sell whole life. The ones that don't understand it and the ones that are crooks, because if you understand that crap and you sell it, you by definition are a crook because anybody that would sell someone an investment that the insurance company keeps their money that they put in there upon death and call that a good deal is a crook. That's just bull, okay? It's just absolute scam stuff. It just pisses me off. And I'll tell you what, the I, whole life, I thought it had just about gone away. And freaking TikTok has revived whole life. TikTok, of all things. Yeah. I mean, peep, listen, people, if your social media sounds like a Tic Tac, you, sh you know, there's only one thing you should listen to on TikTok, and that's stuff we put out. But other than that, <laughs> it's awful. It's a barren landscape of morons. It's oh, great. It's crazy. Absolute nuts. Oh, God. And it, the whole life stuff is all over it. Like they just invented it yesterday. Yeah. It's the oldest financial product. Ma'am, the financial planning com uh, community completely abandoned this garbage 35 years ago. No one sells whole life life insurance except life insurance agents. No one in the financial planning community believes in it. We've all been looking at it going, you've got to be kidding, for decades. And now that stuff comes back on Tic Tac. It's unbelievable. Wow. I got a new idea out of this rant, a new sponsor, blood pressure medicine for Dave. <laughs> when he goes off on whole life, Jeez, this is fantastic. Man. Can't stand those people. It's unbelievable. I think you made that abundantly clear. That well, puts this hour of the Ramsey Show in the books. We'll be back with you before you know it. In the meantime, remember, there's ultimately only one way to financial peace, and that's to walk daily with the Prince of Peace, Christ Jesus. Hey, it's Ken. If you like what you heard in this episode and want to know more about getting started on the Ramsey baby steps, go to RamseySolutions.com and click on the Get Started button. We'll help you figure out the best next step for you based on your specific situation. Again, that's RamseySolutions.com and click Get Started.